Do you have what it takes to ride the Redstone? Before Falcon 9, before the Space Shuttle, before the mighty Saturn V, there was the Redstone missile. It was new, unproven, designed to carry atomic bombs, and they were going to have someone ride on it for America's first trip into space. Now you get to see what that was like. Let me explain. I was digging through the NASA archives when I found images that I'd never seen before, that I didn't even know existed. They were shots out the window of the Redstone rocket from launch to splashdown. You never see this. Nobody is standing up in the spacecraft holding a camera out the window. In fact, there was no astronaut on board at all. Add to that that splashdown is usually hours, days, or even months after launch. This was launch, space, reentry, and splashdown in just over 16 minutes. On top of that, it was one wild ride. Everything that could go wrong did. This is a series of stills from that camera, run together, movie style. They took the pics one frame every six seconds, and it was on film, and they had some problems developing it, and some of the frames were a mess. And someone even wrote directly on the film with a marker. You could even see the darkroom timer in many of the frames. But these are some of the very first shots from a space capsule in history. So I kept everything in, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It has this just winging it feel to it, like you're launching a rocket from your backyard. This was the Mercury Redstone 2 mission. It was launched on January 31st, 1961 from Cape Canaveral, Florida. It was a suborbital spaceflight. It was designed to just really shake out any problems before they put a human on board. I found the original mission control transcripts and I read it in line with what's happening on the images. I've also added some simple graphics on the screen to the right showing you what's going on with the capsule. I said it didn't have an astronaut on board, but that's not quite right. It didn't have a human astronaut on board. The crew for this flight was a chimpanzee on his first ride to space. The NASA press releases and the media called him Ham. He was a true space pioneer, so we really should get his name right. Ham was just an acronym for Holloman Aerospace Medical Center, where he lived. His real name was Chang, and he was born in Cameroon, Africa. Spoiler alert! Chang landed safely in the Atlantic Ocean 16 minutes and 39 seconds after launch. But it was a close one. This flight lost cabin pressure, had an unintended abort, went off course, and pulled 14 Gs. So you need to ask yourself, do you have the right stuff to ride the Redstone? Okay, now on to the flight. Unfortunately, the images were cataloged by someone writing directly on them with a marker. To orientate you to the view, this is the part of the gantry you see out the window of the capsule. Gantry pulling away for launch. T plus zero, lift off. Mercury Redstone lifts off. The onboard clock is running. T plus 16 seconds. Pitch program running. Redstone pitches over two degrees per second from 90 degrees to 45 degrees. T plus 40 seconds. End pitch program. Redstone reaches 45 degrees pitch angle. T plus one minute. Anomaly. Computers report pitch angle is 46 degrees and rising. T 
plus one minute, 24 seconds, max Q. Dynamic pressure, 575 pounds per square foot. T plus two minutes, 17 seconds, BECO. Redstone engine shut down. Booster engine cut off three seconds early. T, two minutes, 17 seconds. Abort, capsule separation. Launch escape system fired. Mayday message signal sent to the recovery forces. T plus two minutes, 18 seconds. The snorkel valve has malfunctioned and opened. Cabin pressure dropped from 5.5 to one PSI. T plus two minutes, 19 seconds. Retro pack jettisoned. The heat shield is now clear. T plus two minutes, 20 seconds. Escape tower jettisoned. T plus two minutes, 35 seconds. Turnaround maneuver. Capsule ASCS system rotates the capsule 180 degrees to heat shield forward attitude. The nose is pitched down 34 degrees. T plus five minutes, zero seconds. Apogee. Apogee is 157 miles, reached at 198 miles downrange from the launch site. T plus five minutes, 45 seconds. Retract periscope. Periscope is automatically retracted in preparation for re-entry. T plus six minutes, 20 seconds. Retro attitude maneuver. ASCS orients capsule in 34 degrees nose down pitch, zero degrees roll, zero degrees yaw. T plus eight minutes, 24 seconds. 0.05 G maneuver. ASCS detects beginning of re-entry and rolls the capsule at 10 degrees per second to stabilize the capsule during re-entry. T plus 10 minutes, 47 seconds. Drogue parachute deploy. Drogue parachute deployed at 22,000 feet, slowing descent to 365 feet per second and stabilizing the capsule. T plus 10 minutes, 54 seconds. Snorkel deploy. The fresh air snorkel deploys at 20,000 feet. ECS switches to emergency oxygen rate to cool cabin. T plus 11 minutes, 24 seconds. Main parachute deploy. The main parachute deploys at 10,000 feet. Descent rate slows to 30 feet per second. T plus 11 minutes, 29 seconds. Landing bag deployment. The landing bag deploys, dropping the heat shield down four feet. T plus 11 minutes, 29 seconds. Fuel dump. The remaining hydrogen peroxide fuel is automatically dumped overboard. T plus 16 minutes, 39 seconds. Splashdown. The capsule lands in the water 422 miles downrange from the launch site. T plus 16 minutes, 39 seconds. Rescue aids deploy. This includes a green dye marker, recovery radio beacon, and whip antenna. And now we're looking up at the lamp from the darkroom where the film was developed in 1961. When the helicopter arrived to retrieve the spacecraft from the ocean, the capsule was sinking. The heat shield that had separated from the capsule on the landing bag slammed back into it, punching several holes in it. And that was the least of the problems with this flight. During the flight, Chang experienced 14.7 Gs. That's way over what's safe for man or chimp. The high G-load and other anomalies showed that the vehicle was not ready for Alan Shepard's first flight, and a lot of work had to be done to get the bugs out. Chang only survived cabin depressurization because he was in a smaller capsule inside the spacecraft. It wasn't a true pressure vessel, but it held enough to keep him alive. The rocket flew so far off course it took nearly three hours to find it and get there. Remember, this was pre-GPS. At the end, Chang was found exhausted 
but healthy, and lived his final days in North Carolina in a colony with other chimpanzees. Mercury Redstone 2 was intended to shake out and discover all the problems with the rocket and the spacecraft before Alan Shepard's historic space flight. So even though it was a total white knuckler, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. And in that sense, the mission was a complete success. Would you have what it takes to ride that redstone? This is JP. Thank you for watching. JP Aerospace, America's other space program.